Well, hello, this is Charles Robinson of Wise Ministries International coming to you with our video, Prophetic Word for 2013. And uh, you can find out more detail about this word. We've got five or six different articles published on our website, coachmybusiness.com forward slash marketplace dash ministry. And uh, really the Lord uh, has given us a word for 2013, the best is yet to come. And um, if you would, we're going to play just a few uh, short uh, verses, if you will, or lyrics from that uh, Frank Sinatra song that Frank uh, really sung so well. Let's just listen to the lyrics a little bit. Out of the tree of life, not the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. You came, O Lord, and everything started to hum in my life. 2013. The best is yet to come. Lord, won't that be fine? Are you ready? Are you ready? I am. We will see the sun of God shine on us in His glory. It's just a warm up. You ain't seen. Because the best is yet to come, I know. Lord, you're mine. I just wanted to give you some uh, fragments from that song, if you will. So what are we going to see in 2013? Rising light and rising darkness. Isaiah 16 says, Arise, shine, for thy light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon thee. Darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the peoples, but the glory of the Lord shall rise upon us those uh, of his sons and daughters that he has called to operate in the Joseph, Daniel, and even the Issachar anointing. And if you want to find out more about the Issachar anointing, go to my other video about 2013 Tipping Point in San Antonio. And you can go to tippingpoint2013.com for more information on that. But uh, as Charles Dickens said in his Tale of Two Cities, it was the best of times, it was the worst of times just depending on what camp you are. You know what? If you have taken the time, like the five wise virgins, to build up the oil in your lamp, you're going to be okay. And if you haven't, this is a time to get prepared right now. You won't be able to do it when the bridegroom comes suddenly. Amen? Like the foolish virgins. Let's talk about uh, the number 13, shall we? One second as I reposition myself and my notes here. <clears throat> the meaning of the numbers in the Bible, the number 13 is associated with rebellion and depravity and is used 15 times in the Bible. All the names of the devil are divisible by 13. Nimrod, the chief rebel after the flood, was the 13th in the line of Ham. In their 13th year of servitude, the kings of the nations rebelled. Twelve represents the government of God, and thirteen represents the governments of men in rebellion against God. How is the number thirteen linked with being defiled? In Mark 7, Jesus mentioned thirteen things that defile a person. What comes out of a man that defiles a man? Evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lewdness, etc. We shall see a rise in these things in 2013 and beyond, but we shall also see a rise in God's glory, in God's government, in his ecclesia, the church. Now, there's nothing evil in of itself, the scripture says, so 2013, or number 13 is not an evil number. 13 can also be used positively. You've got the 12 disciples plus Jesus, that equals 13. So there's a completion there in 13. 13 to some means double portion. And there is a double down, or a double portion that I want to talk about too as well. 
So again, we're, we're going through the various aspects of the 2013 scenarios that God has given to me related to the economy, related to society, and uh, related to biblical numerology. So we're going to see rising darkness, but also rising light. The contrast between light and darkness is going to be more vivid. Amen? But the best is yet to come. We want to double down in 2013. We want to double down. We're going to talk a little bit more about that. But again, some of the lyrics, you came along, Lord, and everything started to hum. You've seen the sun, but you haven't seen it shine. We, this is our time to arise, shine, for the light has come. Wait until the warm-up is underway. I'm going to teach you to fly. We've only tasted the wine, but we're going to drink the cup dry. You think you've flown before, but baby, you ain't left the ground. Wait till you see that sunshine place. Ain't nothing like it here. Wow, doesn't that sound like the, the heaven, heavenly realm? The heavenly realm is coming to earth more in 2013. It's going to be a great, it's going to be a great year for us. Now, let's talk about some of the economic challenges that I see coming for 2013. The Lord said that uh, the economies of the U.S. and the world will enter a tailspin. Now, that doesn't mean that there's going to be a crash, but it means if you've ever seen a tailspin before, it's a kind of a tight loop around an axis just going down, and you have to take drastic measures as a pilot to get out of the spin. Let's talk a little bit about... Uh, the spin from aviation. It's an aggravated stall resulting in an auto rotation about the spin axis, wherein the aircraft follows a corkscrew downward path. Spins can be entered in, in, in intentionally or unintentionally from any flight altitude and from any airspeed. Okay. All that is required is the yaw, the YAW rate while the aircraft is stalled. Yaw means to deviate from a straight course. We have deviated from a straight course of sound monetary, pol monetary policy in the governments of the world. In either case, a specific and often counterintuitive set of actions, remember that word, counterintuitive, may be needed for an effective recovery to be made. God wants us to recover out of this tailspin that the U.S. and the world economies are going to enter into in 2013. But instead of pulling up on the stick, you might have to pull down on the stick. There might be extreme measures. There might be, um, I'll be careful when I say extreme, because sometimes, you know, extreme could be to the government martial law, and we don't want to see that. But different different methods, different counterintuitive ways. That's why we need the Issachar anointing this year. That's why we need the, the new mantle, a new anointing. And please see my video on the new anointing for 2013. If the pilot uses the incorrect technique to recover, the spin can lead to a crash. Now, in a spin, both wings are in a stalled condition. Say that, stalled condition. And the, and the governments of this world seem to be a stalled condition. You know, are we going to implement these austerity measures? Are we going to make these drastic cuts? Or, or are we going to, you know, listen to the people that says, no, 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 we want to keep on getting our bailouts and we want to keep on getting our, our free things from the government. And it's a real tipping point right now in the U.S. where we've got, you know, 51% of the people receiving some benefit from the government. Now, some of that Social Security and, and uh, supplements and retirement and all of that, you know, that has been earned and that's fine. But I'm talking about um, just the rise and the, the increase of use of food stamps. And, and so we have a you know, larger percentage now receiving governmental support than ever before. So it makes cuttings that much more difficult. Okay, so in a spin, both wings are in a stall condition, but one wing will be in a deeper stall than the other. This causes the aircraft to auto-rotate towards the deeper stalled wing due to its higher drag. Okay, spins are characterized by a high angle of attack, low airspeed, and a high rate of descent. It's a real fast dive. Okay. In aircraft, and this is from Wikipedia, by the way, in aircraft that are capable of recovering from a spin, the spin has four phases, okay? And we're going to briefly talk about those phases. Entry. The pilot stalls the plane. 
Second, incipient. With one wing more stalled than the other, the rotation begins. I believe we're at that point now. Developed. The aircraft's rotation speed, airspeed, and vertical speed are stabilized. Okay. And then recovery. After appropriate control inputs, appropriate control inputs, the angle of attack of both wings decreases below the critical angle of attack. Rotation slows. Those nose altitude. The nose altitude of the aircraft steepens, airspeed increases, auto rotation stops, and the aircraft is no longer stalled. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about the prophetic significance of this that Lord has given to me. Auto rotation, corkscrew, downward path. Okay, rotating on itself. The economies of the nations will find themselves unable to get out of the tight, self-involved, and self-inflicted rotation. And the economies will almost be on autopilot, like they, they're kind of spinning out of control. There must be drastic intervention done to stop the tailspin. For the U.S., what was the controlled descent from the 2008 recession being propped up artificially through the injecting of trillions of dollars into the economy, that process will begin to not work anymore. A specific and often counterintuitive set of actions may need, be needed for an effective recovery to be made. Okay. The economies of the world are loaded improperly with too much debt. The nations have exceeded the limitations of debt based upon the percentage of GDP. We must be creative or counterintuitive to survive financially. If the Fed and the U.S. and the governments of the world use the incorrect techniques to recover, there will be a crash. 2013 is a year to look for the crash. Okay. So an entry, the pilot stalls the plane. The economies of the world are stalled right now. There's very little growth. We've entered into spin. Incipient, the second phase, prophetically, interpreting. With one wing more stalled than the other, the rotation starts. The U.S. House of Representatives and the Senate are can be seen as the two wings of this scenario. There is supposed to be balance, but instead there is imbalance. Or you could also see the executive branch and the legislative branch at fisticuffs over the debt ceiling, at this time, government control, etc. The president, as the pilot, is unable to lead the U.S. away from spending. Thus, the rotation has started. You know, the stalemate in the between the president and the uh, the executive branch and the legislative branch. You know, in the debt ceiling, and, and are we going to cut? We got to cut uh, one dollar future spending for every dollar we raise the debt ceiling. You know, that seems reasonable, but uh, there's fisticuffs, there's imbalance right now. The, the tailspin. You see the process of the dive has started. In developed, the aircraft's rotation speed and vertical speed are stabilized. In this tight loop, at least one wing of the aircraft is stalled. The legislative branch will be thoroughly stalled in 2013 and the rotation will become developed unless something happens. There is a parachute though. In, in special cases, parachutes can be deployed that were previously installed on planes that had entered into a, to a tailspin. Okay, you can deploy the parachute. What is the parachute? Well, it's recovery. I believe that, um, that a oil and, and, excuse me, a natural gas and oil renaissance is coming again. We're going to be the largest exporters of, of natural gas in the U.S. by 2015. We've seen a lot of natural, uh, excuse me, oil uh, drills, drillings going on, new starts, new platforms coming up. And we're going to see the benefits of the natural gas technology, like fracking with water, as well as horizontal drilling. That's going to benefit and has benefited uh, the oil industry. So we're going to see a renaissance of, of the old as new. The old energy is going to come back. And we're going to be producers in the U.S. And the nations of the world are going to be producers of oil and natural gas and exporters. It's a new energy boom. That's what we need to be asking God for. You know, you've heard about the Oklahoma exploration, the Dakotas, but that's not going to peak until about 2015. Greece is our tailspin model. Okay, watch as great Greece's fate becomes the fate of other nations. How have the people of Greece responded to the to the austerity measures? With camps, runs in the bank, and rioting. Okay. 
the seed of modern day thought, the Grecian mindset is being exposed by God for what it is, futile without him. Now I want to move on. We've talked about the best is yet to come and the glory of the Lord rising upon us and also darkness rising in 2013. And, you know, the Aurora, Colorado shootings and Sandy Hook shootings and, you know, the, the control of guns that uh, they're going to try to, to implement. Remember, it's a spiritual problem. There's nothing evil in and of itself, right? But I think we all should be looking at, at video games and uh, the shooting where it just becomes callous. Uh, hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands of death, you know, in some of these games. I really think the video game industry should be looked at. Not, uh, not uh, legal gun owners. Uh, we have a right to own guns by the Second, the second Amendment. And so uh, that's uh, another video for another time. So we talked about um, the economy as well, the economies of the world entering a tailspin and the counterintuitive measures that are going to be needed, the tough decisions that are going to be made to get out of the tailspin. And then the third um, area, obviously we're going to see gold and silver rise. We'll see a rush to the, the U.S. Treasuries and to the U.S. dollar initially when we start to see more um, economic tailspins and problems happen uh, in the U.S. But um, the best is yet to come. Amen? Now, the third aspect I want to focus on is just, a, a, not just, but an important word from God that he spoke to me. I'm just going to read it as he gave to me. The Lord says, Behold, I will send a new wave of revivalists to this nation and to the nations of the world. And I will instruct my gathering angels to gather my remnant from the four corners of the earth. There should be a great harvest of the ones that I have ordained from the foundation of the world. This is before the final battle of the ages, before the day of the Lord, when I will fight with my mighty angels and when my son shall lead an awesome company, which includes us, into battle against the wicked ones and his followers, the wicked one and his followers. Get ready for battle. This is the year to get ready for battle. The battles are coming. Prepare your hearts at habits of the earth for the time is coming when the enemy shall be cast down and shall be fierce because he knows his time is short. <clears throat> and shall deceive many. Revelation 12, verse 7. A remnant, a triumphant reserve, I am calling forth out of the sea of humanity. Are you one of my remnants? Are you one that may be accounted among the 7,000 prophets like Obadiah, which he sealed up in the days of Elijah? We are in the days of Elijah again. You shall see tests of power and strength and authority in the earth again, like in the days of Elijah. And I desire to use you, says the Lord. Rejoice, for your redemption is at hand. And the culmination of the ages that my holy prophets have spoken about is at hand. Be not deceived in this day, for there are many false prophets and false Christs that speak not in my name, but in their own name. Turn away from these and hearken unto the voice of your Lord. The damage that is being done from these who speak only of my grace and not of my severity is great. And these false um, false agents, if you will, false prophets cause many to slumber and say, where is the sign of his coming? From such turn away, again I say unto you, but be a silver trumpet and blow a pure word from heaven and not as a sounding brass or as a tinkling cymbal, says the Lord. Blow a true and sure word for the people. Educate yourselves on what is going on all around you, your nation, uh, your resources are being stolen from you. Your leaders promise you uh, things that they cannot deliver. They tolerate and promote false religions above the knowledge of the one true God. Take heed, the hearts of the nations are in my hand, and I will have my last word. They can plan what they wish. But the elitists, the central bankers, will know that there is a God in heaven in this final hour, and that I, that I move nations, and I move the hearts of kings, and suddenly nations and cities shall turn to me, even in a day. I can save a nation in a day, Isaiah 66, verse 8. And I am calling on you to lead this effort, and do not fear for your lives, or wonder what you eat or drink, or what you will wear. I will clothe you and feed you, and direct you, 
and you shall be like John the Baptist, operating the spirit and the power of Elijah in these last days. I will feel creativity and inventions in you, and I will cure many major diseases through this healing revelation. Revelation of how disease gets a foothold and how it grows in the body. Yes, there is more for science to do, but science that is led by my people, science led by inspiration. So arm yourself not with the weapons of violence, and God is not saying that we should not bear arms, but with weapons of my powerful words within you and my spirit. I will breathe upon you in 2013 and give you a new strength to double down against the doubling down of the enemy that will happen in the nations this year. They may say, lock them down, causing the people to look down. But I say, look up, for your redemption draws nigh. Remember, this earth is not your home, but heaven and the new earth. And you shall see with your very own eyes the fulfillment of what I have called each of you to do. I will be faithful to my word to you. I will accomplish, excuse me, it will accomplish that which has been sent for. And you will fulfill your destiny in this earthly realm and the next. And you will feed the multitudes and clothe them and give them drink in the same way that I will do for you. For you are forerunners in the earth for what I am going to do. Be strong, double down, persevere, seek shelter in me, for I shall surely protect you. They shall seek many in the last days that do not know me shall seek the mountains to fall on them. According to Luke 22:30, but my holy mountain, my presence, shall uphold you. Amen. Even so, come quickly, Lord Jesus. Now, the use of the term "double down." I was not familiar with this term when the Lord spoke it in the prophecy above that I just stated. <clears throat> to double down means to engage in risky behavior when someone is already in a dangerous situation. Yeah. Thrown caution to the wind. In the game of blackjack, the term means to double the original bet after receiving the first two cards. You will then be given one more card. I think the Lord used this term to show us that we need to really believe in the hand that we have been dealt in this life. Our gifts, our talents, our abilities, our social status, our sphere of influence. And we're going to use that hand to the maximum effectiveness and that he is going to give us a double portion of effectiveness and the gifts of the Holy Spirit in this final hour. Hallelujah. So the best is truly yet to come for God's people. And it's time to rise up and receive a new anointing the Issachar anointing, in this day and in this hour. God is going to place those with an Issachar anointing. This is the fourth aspect. The Issachar prophets are going to arise. God is going to place those with an Issachar anointing in the lives of the rich and influential. And they will provide us unprecedented spiritual revelation in the areas of investments, deep spiritual counsel, and personal growth, enabling these high net worth individuals to fulfill their destiny in the nations, to be those Josephs, to provide resources for God's people. Hallelujah. So we're going to see an arise of the Issachar prophets, the Issachar anointing. Those of the Issachar anointing are going to have to rebuild the nation. Okay, we're on the verge of a collapse, as you know, financially in the currency. The nation is really bankrupt. It's insolvent. And so it's going to be up to us to rebuild this nation with God's help and his strength. Amen. 2013 is, we're going to start to see the perfect storm. It's God's perfect storm that he is an issue, that he's allowing, that King Jesus, not the Democrats, not the Republicans, but King Jesus can come forth and his kingdom arise within us. The kingdom of God is within you. It's in, on the inside of you. This is another word for 2013. Do not try to build your finances in only gold or silver, but let me be your treasure. I am a treasure in your heart, and I will fund your dreams, says the Lord. They're my dreams. We will make it through the perfect storm. Remember, I'm in charge, and though the seas be in turmoil, and some may not know where their next meal is going to come from, or those of their children, I will supernaturally provide for you and your family. It's the time for me to be the great God that you have seen and heard in the past with the wonderful examples in my word and the great moves of God in the past. 
I am restoring my greatness to your lives in 2013 and beyond. This is the year of our Lord, 2013. I call you a producer. I call you my supply. I am Jehovah Jireh, your supplier, but you're going to be my suppliers to the people of the earth. You are my Joseph. You are my storehouses. 2013 is going to be a year where people's priorities change and a year that people's eyes open up. Their eyes will open to see who their source really is. Is it the government or is it the Lord? It will be an opportunity for my church, the Lord says, to fill the voids and meet the needs. And fill them and meet them you will. I have a desire to pray for President Obama more than ever before. That his leadership abilities will, they must come forth because he's going to be tested uh, in this next four years. We need to pray for the inauguration, which is coming up at the time of this taping on November 21st. We need to pray for his inauguration, that that will go smoothly and safely. 2013 will continue the theme of 2012. It was the best of times and it was the worst of times, taken from Dickens. I believe I mentioned that earlier, a tale of two cities. Just depends what camp you're in. And we're on the winning side. You're on the winning side. You're on God's team. Amen? So as I leave you today, let's just remember the best is yet to come in 2013. He's going to teach us to fly. We're going to taste of the wine. We're going to drink the cup dry. Get ready to arrive and shine. You think you've flown before? You haven't left the ground. Now we're going to leave the ground. Finally fly. What God has really called us to do. Ain't nothing like it here. Heaven come to earth. It's going to be fine. Look up for your redemption draws nine. God bless you so much. He's ours. Look up in 2013. Bye-bye.